question on this case. Uh, uh, the case you can see, uh, this is the right ventricle, the left ventricle, and there is a tricuspid regurgitation. We have a situs, pericardial effusion. I'll discuss this case step by step. So uh, that's how you can actually analyze any fetal echo case what you see. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, I think it's a good idea to do it right now because I'll keep on posting my videos and you would be notified when, whenever I post a new one. So let's begin one by one. Now that's, uh, if you notice here, this is uh, the right atrium which is enlarged. This is the left ventricle which is small. This is the right ventricle which is uh, dilated and there is some aneurysmal dilatation here and you can also notice thinning of the myocardium. This is the place where the moderator band complex is attached. I say it complex because there's, there's a lot of cordy here and that's a moderator band that is just holding this portion of the ventricle and making it look like a dumbbell because this is holding each other and that's not letting this area, mid area to dilate as far as uh, the other areas are dilated. Proximal part also is dilated. The myocardium is thinned out. You can see a mild pericardial effusion. You can see a pericardial effusion here. Then you see the, the skin edema uh, around. You see the large uh, the cardiac chamber with a small left ventricle, uh, the pulmonary uh, lungs. And then not only that, you see a pleural effusion also here. And if I may tell you where the pleural effusion is, right there. You can see the pleural effusion and, uh, uh, and the lungs are small. There's a pulmonary hypoplasia because of the cardiomegaly. So again, the same thing, little zoomed up and deliberately angled to show you a mild pleural effusion, pericardial effusion, and ascites, skin edema, indicating high drops. And uh, then you have this uh, uh, complex of a moderator band and a lot of uh, coarse trabeculations which are seen here. And you notice the thinning of the uh, myocardium. Of so now that was the case where we started with. You can see there is a tricuspid regurgitation and uh, the tricuspid regurgitation is more than uh, systolic. I mean, it lasts pretty long. And then rest of the description I already told you, RV is hypokinetic, RA is dilated, there is a cardiomegaly. Then what is the differential diagnosis here? Same as I discussed with my previous case on a, a YouTube, the first possibility could be RV dysfunction. The RV dysfunction in the format, it could be cardiomyopathy, it could be RV aneurysm in this case. It could be all abnormality. All abnormality is again as a kind of a cardiomyopathy where there is a parchment like or thinning of the myocardium, the right ventricle. And this is a congenital condition. And uh, this can lead to a lot of arrhythmia and RV dysfunction. Primary tricuspid valve abnormality where you can either have uh, tricuspid dysplasia or you can abstain anomaly. This doesn't look in this case uh, to be true because the tricuspid valve is looking fine. And there could be an RVOT obstruction. Yes, it could be like you can get in a uh, ductal restriction, pulmonary stenosis, which can evolve gradually. And the pulmonary atresia is unlikely because the RV generally there is small, it cannot be dilated. Okay, so let us go one step further. So same case, what you see here, we did a tricuspid uh, velocity measurement. And if you see the tricuspid velocity, hardly two meters. So that means RV is unable to generate the pressure. This kind of rules out uh, uh, obstruction in the RV OT or a ductal restriction where the velocity, like I showed you in my previous uh, case on the on uh, on uh, YouTube, you could you could see that the TR velocity in that case was very high. So a low TR velocity actually tells you RV is unable to generate an adequate pressure. 
so that means the rv pressures are low so this tilts the entire thing our looking at the approach towards rv dysfunction rather than anything else so you can notice on a three dimensional echo you can see this portion of the when uh, this thing is moving towards the left ventricle looks a little normal this is moving disynchronously with the, this as per the rv is concerned which raises a good suspicion of an aneurysm of the uh, the right ventricle here large aneurysm and loss of uh, muscle of the rv led to the dilatation of the rv in the rest of the right ventricle so this could be the primary thing that is an rv aneurysm and then you can see an rv aneurysm here and you can see a disynchronous movement of the rv in this portion now look at uh, as i told you there was a reduced inflow into the right uh, ventricle and that is documented very clearly on a pulse doppler and an m mode you see on a pulse doppler this is the width of the inflow e wave and a wave of the left side and this is the mitral valve m mode opening look at the timing of the mitral valve opening and compare with the right side look at the inflow of uh, the right side it is too small look at the m mode of the tricuspid valve again the opening is very very small and then if you see here the right ventricle is dilated and this portion is aneurysmal and you see the right atrium is dilated that is the pulmonary artery and then you can see there is a ballooning or bulging of the pulmonary valve into the right ventricle which gives me a suspicion that there would be a pulmonary regurgitation the pressure in the pulmonary artery are high that is making the pulmonary valve bulge into the right ventricle you see this spontaneous contrast kind of uh, uh, movement in the uh, the right ventricle these echo echo uh, uh, echogenicities which are moving this is called spontaneous echo contrast and this is a feature of a right ventricle uh, dilatation and stasis then you can see on the next panel that is a tricuspid regurgitation and then you have a pulmonary regurgitation which is severe which is going right up to the right ventricle wall here and that is a severe pulmonary regurgitation moderate to severe tricuspid uh, regurgitation and this is the pulmonary uh, regurgitation and there is a very small forward flow which again uh, rules out a pulmonary stenosis the velocities are too small uh, I showed you the same thing uh, coronaries in the previous uh, YouTube video. Now you can see the coronary arteries which are prominent here. So that's the prominent uh, coronary artery. Then you see the prominent coronary arteries uh, here as well. You see one coronary artery here. So these prominent coronary arteries indicate that the RV diastolic pressures or RV systolic pressures are high. This is the patient where you had a, a reversal of uh, A wave in the ductus venous flow and that obviously uh, led to uh, the hydrops and that is uh, ascites. I hope uh, you like this case. Uh, next again I would show you a case of uh, right ventricle dilated and a tricuspid regurgitation and try to dissect to a, another uh, type of uh, tricuspid regurgitation so that would be a kind of a series so i think it's a good idea to subscribe so that the moment i put the next video you are intimated and uh, you can look at that video